Just a reminder that these videos are made for adult doll collectors or adults buying dolls for others. This is not a video for children. Viewer discretion is advised. Thank you very much for listening. Hello, Internet! My name is Kelsey, and welcome back to my closet. So, sorry that I missed last week doing a video. I just had a lot going on. It was my brother's birthday, we went away for the weekend, and so, yeah, it's a whole busy couple of weeks for me. However, I am finally sitting down to film something that I've been waiting to do for a while because she was supposed to come on Amazon weeks ago and she never did. So then I had to cancel the order and order from Target. But you guys have already seen the title and the thumbnail. So you know that it's Refresh Cleo from Monster High. So yeah, she came out at the same time as Refresh Frankie and Laguna, but she like disappeared whereas the other two were widely available from anywhere that sells Monster High. And I put an order in for her and for Welcome Committee Frankie, I think, around the same time on Amazon. Hers was listed to come August 28th, for weeks and months, actually, listed to be coming August 28th. So I'm waiting for August 28th, figuring that I'm not the only one experiencing this issue. Meanwhile, I had seen her in person at Target a few weeks before August 28th, didn't have the extra money to buy her at the time, so didn't get her. Then she was gone. She was still available on Target online, but I was like, no, nah, it's almost August 28th. It's fine. I'll just wait. And then August 28th comes and goes and she doesn't arrive. And then I get the little thing on Amazon. We need to con talk to you about your order or something. You need to do an approval. And I was like, hell no, you had your chance and you failed me. So canceled that order, ordered her on Target, and then she came within a couple of days. So anyway, we're here now and we're going to open her and I really think that she is far superior to most of the Cleos that have been out. The original core Cleo was nice, but these refresh dolls are just really like such a better representation, I think, of Monster High, a little bit more in the spirit of G1. When I saw her design, it was between her and Monster Fest Cleo, but I think I like that she's looking forward. Usually I like a side glance doll, but I actually like her looking forward face a little bit more and I like her hairstyle a little bit more. And now if Welcome Committee Frankie could just show up, we could have Clanky. I really want that Frankie. It's the best Frankie. I'm not getting to the point. The point is we're gonna open this doll. Let's take a look at the box real quick. So here's Cleo, the usual box, of course, with the updated refresh artwork. And this time she comes with his set instead of Anubis, the dog that, or I guess the Anubis that she came with in the first core Cleo. And then on the back again, we have the refresh artwork. It says Cleo Denial. Let's see, I can't read it through the screen. Her monster type is Regally Radiant Mummy. Her must-haves are Eye of Horus Boba and a Heart Jar. And her monster pet is Hisset. And then if you're looking for refresh Cleo still, there's the barcode. I did see more of her in Target the last time that I was there. So I think whatever weird scarcity issue there was with this particular doll has ended at this point and now she is widely available. I'm gonna open her up so we can finally look at her. All right guys, so here is Cleo. She is out of the box and ready for her close up. I'm trying to figure out if this is Saran or not. It almost feels like Saran. I'm pretty sure every other Cleo doll has been Polly, but like a treated Polly. But this feels closer to Saran, but I'm like 95% sure. So if someone could like verify that with me, please do. And I will be super stoked <laughs> if that's the case. Let's look at her face. So here is Cleo's gorgeous, gorgeous face. Mm. I love the very dark eyeliner they always give her, the extreme makeup the square wing and even her eyelashes end in a square shape at the end. There's like tinsel thing sticking out wild out there. She's got a light blue eyeshadow. There's a little smoky gray under the eye there, but most of it close to the eye is a light blue. And then there's a gold layer up in the crease that lines up with her eyelashes. It's very nice, like I said, very heavy makeup, bold but very appropriate makeup look, and I really do like it. 
Of course, on this eye, we have that little extra curl underneath. She's got really sharp, dark eyebrows, and then a navy blue lip color with the little gold lip ring in the center. I mean, such an upgrade to her original face, and I do have my first core Cleo who, um, she had a little bit of a cat accident. I still need to fix her hair, so she's looking a little rough, but we'll bring her over anyway to uh, compare. But anyway, let's look at the hair then. You can see too in the way that it moves, it almost has that saran quality to it. That's why I'm like really convinced that this is saran. And if so, Bravo, Monster High, thank you. It's a very nice dark blue, and it's really all this one shade of blue, except for a little streak. It's in a half up, half down. It's kind of hidden by the tinsel, but there is a lighter blue streak in this side of the ponytail. And like I said, there is the gold tinsel. You can see the lighter blue more so in the scalp area and the bangs. There's also a more golden blonde moment in the bangs as well. The first Cleo, her hair was like multiple shades of blue, but I kind of like this one shade, this really rich dark blue. It's a very nice royal kind of color. Anyway, she also has these two little hair clips. So one of them is a gold snake. The other is blue and it's just a decorative hair clip. Doesn't really have any specific significance. Then we have her earrings, which are stone slabs, I guess they're supposed to be, with hieroglyphics on them. Obviously, I can't read hieroglyphics, la la la, hieroglyphics, so I don't know what they say. Maybe there's some kind of ancient mummy curse or something, so maybe I don't want to know what they say. But they are a golden plastic. They have little studs up top and little platforms underneath the slabs, which kind of reminds me of that one episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog, King Ramsey's Curse. That's one of my favorites. That guy, he's so like creepy pasta with his weird CGI animation. My brother was so scared of that episode when he was little. <laughs> Every time it came on, I was like, look, look, it's King Ramsey's. He's like, no, I was a bad sister. But anyway, so then we get down to her outfit and I love this outfit like so much more than the first outfit. I mean, at the time I really liked the other Cleo's outfit, but this one really blows it out of the water. The application of the mummy bandages is better. It's a little more cohesive than the other one. So we have this gold top. It is satin in the front, and then we have two puffy tulle sleeves in the same gold. And there is a light blue, kind of aqua colored ribbon that goes around her neck. So she doesn't have a necklace, but I actually don't mind that she doesn't have a necklace because I wouldn't want anything covering up this little ribbon detail in the shirt. And I think it's a nice call to the bandages without being actual bandages. Speaking of the bandages, you can see that there is a faint print of the bandage detail on the satin area of the shirt, and that printing does carry around to the back. There are also clear straps on this shirt, and the ribbon part does Velcro, Velcro is a little bit unsightly though. <laughs> they could have trimmed that down to be the length of the ribbon. I guess that's something I could do, but still, it's not the prettiest for someone who doesn't want to potentially alter their doll clothes. But at least you can't really see it when you're facing forward. And then the rest of the sleeves, I also should mention that the gold in the tool, like you can kind of see there's a shimmer, like the thread is metallic in this tool, which is really nice. And we have some ribbon details. Both sleeves have ribbons wrapped around them and then they hang down, go past her knees a little bit. We got three on each side to be like her bandages kind of unraveling. And see, that's what the original Cleo's outfit should have had from the get-go rather than having the bandages on the jacket 
where, you know, if you take the jacket off, then she doesn't have those bandage details anymore. There was printing on the sleeves of her dress, but it wasn't as nice as this. This is very subtle, where the printing doesn't really take away from the outfit to make it look cheap, because you do have the ribbon detail on the edge here. And then the bottom half, she has this piece of aqua tealish colored tulle that is tied in a knot around her waist. It really is actually tied. There's no like Velcro or anything. You would have to untie it. And that means that it can be a little more versatile if you wanted to put it around her shoulders or wrap it in her hair or something. I like the extra little contrast of color that it adds to the outfit as a whole. I mean, we'll look at what it looks like without this. It ties up well with the blue in the shirt around her neck. If See, without this, there's kind of nothing to bring in that blue color, so the blue doesn't really make sense on the shirt as much. It just adds that extra pop of color that's needed. And then we get down to the skirt. Now, this is also a satin skirt, but rather than printed, we have some gold foil details. First of all, I love the metallic shine. It continues all the way around. The skirt is hemmed at the top and the bottom, and we've got all of this imagery on here to go with Cleo's Egyptian heritage, but also throwing in a little monster high here and there. We've got like a crystal heart, we've got spider webs, we've got little tiny skulls at the bottom, we got scarab beetles along the top, there's eyes, and even some Egyptian imagery or in I keep meaning to say ancient Egyptian imagery. Some of that stuff is, it's inherently a little bit creepy. Like, you know, without being part of Monster High, without like scary movies featuring mummies or The Mummy featuring Brendan Fraser. <laughs> some of it just has that natural creep factor, which I think is what lends mummies so easily to horror and Halloween and monsters. You don't even have to do much to change it. I guess that makes it kind of cool because like, yeah, mummies don't actually come back to life and haunt you and everything, but they do actually exist. This is the most reality-based character in Monster High. There's no real thing as vampires and werewolves and everything, but there are real mummies and this Egyptian stuff. So that, I think, adds an extra fun layer to Cleo. All right, and then finally, we get down to the shoes and a little extra accessory here, because you'll notice she doesn't have, besides her earrings and the hair clips, any jewelry, but with this outfit, I don't think we needed bracelets and necklaces, but she has this little extra snake piece down here, which is not attached to the shoes. So if you wanted to use this on another Clio doll, but with a different pair of shoes, or even like a G1 Clio doll, you could probably put this on her, this pair of shoes. It does have a face right here, a little creepy face, and it curls. It's attached right now with a rubber band. Let's take off the rubber band and see how easily that it stays on. Yeah, I mean, it feels a little bit looser, but I don't think it's about to like totally fall off if you move her around too much. And there is a lot of molded detail on the snake too. You can see some molded scales. And then we get down to the actual shoes. So they are some strappy sandals with high heels, of course. She has some light blue scarab beetles on the strap that goes over the toe. There's some mummy bandage molding on the sole. There's a lot of decorative detail as well in the molding. I like the little pop of the blue scarab beetle. I don't think I would have wanted more color on these shoes besides that, actually, um, except maybe on this heel area that we're gonna look at. Now, these are a really, really cool detail. These are little spice jars with Anubis heads 
There's scarab beetles on the front of the jar. I mean, there are there is so much detail on these tiny little jars. We've got the scarab beetles. There's little tiny snakes molded in and everything. If these had been painted, even just a little bit on the head part of it, that would have been great. They don't look bad as they are, but we really need some more paint on the Monster High G3 shoes. I, I mean, <laughs> these are so cool. It makes me upset again that Draculaura always gets such crap shoes because look at these. These are super cool. I really, these might be some of my favorite Monster High shoes just for the heels. I think the, the spice jar thing is just super cool. And of course, that is also a reference to Mummy Burial in case you didn't know. And then we do have one more little surprise on the bottom. We have Cleo Skelet which is the skelet with the mummy wraps on it. That's super cute. Always love when they put little hidden details on the bottoms of the shoes. So yeah, that is Refresh Cleo straight out of the box as she comes. And I really, I really do like her design, like far and away so much more than the first core Cleo. And it's such a contrast because, you know, I really enjoy core Draculaura and I still love her and like I wouldn't change anything about her except her shoes probably. Her shoes are boring but I really love the way she looks. I also really like the core refresh Draculaura. Comparing them I really couldn't choose one that I like better whereas this one is just objectively better than the first core Cleo and I feel kind of bad saying that because I don't think the other one was horrible but they really did a lot just design wise that made so much more sense and I mean she just looks fabulous fabulous I'm sorry <laughs> gotta keep with the monster high lingo so anyway she also comes with stuff as we know first of all we have her little pet which is his set and like I said she came with this Anubis dog thing in the first one but this time we get her original G1 pet. I mean I don't remember what his set looked like in G1 because I don't have a G1 Cleo and wasn't collecting at the time so yeah I'm assuming this one is just a more cartoony looking version of the original one. The I will put a picture of it right next to it so we can compare but it's a cute enough little cobra. I've said before, if I'm gonna get doll pets, I would rather have Monster High pets because they're just more interesting than like Barbie pets, which are all just regular animals. She also comes with a backpack. And this one is definitely more ergonomic than her pyramid backpack from the first core Cleo. So it's just a regular backpack shape with a very large scarab beetle, there's some painted detail on the wings. She's got an Ankh charm in blue hanging on the front here. Some hanging tassel details, which are just little chains with diamonds. It is, of course, a nice golden plastic. She has chain straps in the back and it does open and you can definitely fit a lot more in there than her original backpack. We also have some sunglasses. They are a very pale blue plastic, almost clear, completely clear, like it's a very light blue tinge. And in the center on the nose piece there is a scarab beetle, there's some little molded details around the lenses, and then in the corners there are little tiny heart details. I want to see if I can get you guys to see that. Still kind of adjusting to this whole phone thing. I don't know, I feel like because the shot is wider I'm having a harder time with like centering stuff. I'm playing around with it still though. It'll get better, I promise. <laughs> she also has this pencil, maybe? Pen? Yes, I think it's supposed to be a pen or a pencil. And it has a scarab beetle, it has a couple of rings around it, and a hole for her finger. We get a drink. Now this is a mold that we've had before. It's the little boba that they reference on the back of the packaging. The Horus coffee. Yeah, so there's a sticker that shows little creepy spider bobas and the main sticker on here has the bandages. There's a little handle so that she can hold it and 
the lid does come off and it has a straw but like i said this is a mold that we've seen before not the most exciting accessory but she's gonna get thirsty out in the desert i guess we also have a pyramid pizza which is pretty appropriate i guess since pizza is triangular as are pyramids it's just kind of printed inside of this pyramid shaped box that's not the more exciting thing. I think the box itself is much cuter just as a decoration. It's a little pyramid. It has two snakes and a scarab beetle, and it's that same golden plastic. There's nothing on the back. But I really do like this just for decorative purposes. I just think it looks cool as it is. I mean, we, if we don't open it, we don't have to say it's a pizza box. It could just be like a pencil case or something. She also comes with a little scroll, which has some spider webs and a pyramid on it, some math equation, I guess, because there's a lot of math involved with the pyramids. Maybe these are her notes from geometry class? In the bottom corner here, I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. An alien? Well, some people do say that the aliens came down to help people build the pyramids. I don't know. <laughs> Conspiracy theories? <laughs> but I do really like the mold of this. It's a flexible plastic too, so feels a little bit more like a scroll. On this side, there's a snake going around the actual scroll holding part, and it's all jagged around the edge, and there's nothing on the back. And finally, this is really cool. I think this might be one of my favorite accessories. It's her heart in a jar. We have this little clear plastic jar with a gold base and a gold top. It has a heart-shaped handle on the lid. And then her heart is inside and it's wrapped in a snake. And you can open the jar and the heart is attached to the lid, but at least you can see it more clearly. It's kind of got a geometric style to it, kind of like it's a crystal. And yeah, I mean, it's got that low res printing on it, but I don't mind on the accessories as much as I would mind on the faces. You know, it's kind of interesting. It's totally unrelated, but the reason that we went away for the weekend for my brother's birthday is he went, he loved Thomas the Tank Engine as a kid. And in Lancaster, they have a life-size Thomas engine once in a while that takes you down the railroad. And so we went for that, <laughs> just, you know, as a goof. He turned 25, so he's not watching the new show or anything, but they had the new Thomas toys and it, they're made by Fisher Price, which is owned by Mattel. And they use the low res printing on the faces of the trains, which I think is ridiculous because just give them nice faces on the trains. Like I never thought I would have to say that about a train toy. Not even Thomas can escape the low res printing. Anyway, that is Core Refresh Clio and everything that she comes with. So we're just gonna do a quick comparison now with the original Core Clio. And like I said, she had a little bit of uh, a mishap, a run-in with the cats, <laughs> and I have not had a chance to fix her hair yet, so I apologize that she looks so rough, <laughs> but uh, at least we could compare her outfit and makeup. Also, you can see how different the hair color is. This one's hair is like super, super dark blue, which it's a nice shade, like this super ultra navy, but you can also tell that this one is shinier and a little bit more flowy, whereas this one's a little bit stiff. Let's look at their faces. This one obviously has a very bold makeup look, and I really do prefer that. This one, I mean, the makeup is fine. Like I said, she's not a bad doll. It's just that this one does everything so much better. Even just the blue on the lip instead of the red is more cohesive with her color scheme. Like the red and especially the orange on this doll because there's a lot of pops of orange. It just doesn't go with her theme and her usual color scheme. This one's colors are all so cohesive with all the shades of blue and gold. It just all comes together so nicely. And then the outfits, this outfit is really busy. Cause like I said, we have pops of like weird colors, like the orange, but the print on the dress too is just really going all over the place. We have the printed 
bandages on the sleeves, printed hieroglyphics and everything, and then on top of that, this plastic belt and the really large necklace with the orange on it, the boots with the orange toes. This one's outfit looks simpler. It's put together so much better. It's so like well designed. And then you put the jacket, like I don't have the jacket right here, but if you put the jacket on top of this outfit, then it gets even more chaotic looking. This one, I don't know, it's just so, so far and away better, like I said before. Even the earrings, like I know they were going for like a pyramid hoop, but I like the way that these earrings sit better. I like the hieroglyphics. These just kind of stick out at weird angles. And then even like it's hidden by the messed up hair, but the headband. Like, I get what they were going for, a, a wing of a beetle or maybe like some other kind of Egyptian god or whatever, but it's just not... If this Cleo didn't exist and I didn't have anything to compare this one to, then maybe I wouldn't feel like this one was just so inferior. But with this one and seeing what they could do when they really put their minds to it, this Cleo is just so much better. And I'm so sorry, but it's the truth. <laughs> Even though I may not be super fond of her anymore, I'm still gonna fix her because it's not her fault. This is what I'm talking about with the cats. I love the cats, don't get me wrong, but they touch something that they're not supposed to and then it's just like a hot mess and then I have to clean it up. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is I love this Cleo so much better and she, she just really did everything right and I forgot to put the glasses on her. I even like these sunglasses better than the first sunglasses. Even these sunglasses are better sunglasses than these ones, these like aviator ones. You can't even really see her eyes through these because the plastic is so translucent rather than being actually clear. These just kind of look like glasses glasses. Yeah, she doesn't really need them necessarily to make her outfit look good, but I do like their design a lot better. Definitely this is the superior Cleo. Now, is she the best Cleo that they've ever come out with? I don't no, because this is the only other one that I have besides the core, the first core one. I mean, I personally really like this one. I don't know if they'll ever come out with one that I like better. This one definitely is my favorite. I am very glad that she finally was able to come home. Let me know what you guys think of her. Have you seen her? Have you been wanting to get her and had the same trouble where she just kind of like was not available anywhere? Thanks so much for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and until next time, all the cops in the donut shop say A-O-A. -E.